Hello and welcome to another Every Tuesday tutorial. In this week's tutorial, I'm going to walk you through masking in Procreate. So with Procreate's last update, they introduced masking. Masking was kind of available before, but not as powerful as it is now. And it really didn't get as much credit as it should have gotten because masking is amazing when it comes to creating and editing in Procreate. So today I'm going to walk you through my two favorite scenarios when it comes to iPad lettering. And you'll quickly see how efficient and time time saving this method can be. So masking is a form of non-destructive editing, which can kind of sound confusing, but what it basically means is if you change your mind about something instead of erasing and then changing your mind later and having to redraw it all back in, it just hides the part that you don't want. And if you change your mind and you want to bring it back later on, you can bring back the original without having to redraw anything and try and match things up. So it's a really, really cool feature. If you're familiar with Photoshop, then you probably already understand masking. But just in case you don't, I'm going to walk you through exactly what it is. So after this video, you'll have no doubt about about how to use masking and you can begin implementing it into your workflow because it is so powerful. So my two favorite ways of masking are masking in textures, which you can see right here with the gold texture, and then also masking objects around other objects. So you can see with this flourish that's coming around, we can hide portions of it, like where the G is, and I can bring it back very easily. This isn't erased. That's how I can get such a nice crisp edge where it meets behind it and where it goes in front of it. So I'm able to hide this portion of the flourish and keep this portion visible. And if I ever want to change my mind and remove this one and bring back this one, I can do it extremely easily. I don't have to try and draw this and make them connect and you know all the issues that can kind of come along with trying to match things up after the fact. So I'm going to create a brand new document. We're going to walk through all of this from the very beginning and we will get started. Okay, so I have a new document created. I've put in this really muted teal background and then I've got my text right here on top of it. Um, let me give you the color builds that we're using right here. If you click on the link in the video description, you can have access to all of them written out, but I'll just show you these pretty quickly. So if I come over here to value, um, I'm pulling from the hexadecimal value right here just because it's way quicker to input these. So these are the hex numbers. So this is the dark blue. This is the medium blue. This one's this bright teal. This one's the muted background that we're using right here. And then here's white. Okay, so I've just, I'm just using the dark blue for my lettering right here and then that muted teal for the background. And we're going to first talk about the flourishing, so hiding your flourishing. So I'm gonna draw in a flourish and you wanna make sure that it's on its own layer. So come to your layers. I, you can see I've got my lettering right here, I've got my background right here. So I'm gonna create a brand new layer, so it's the very top layer. I've got my white selected and I've got my mono weight Procreate brush right here. This is a free brush. If you click on the link in the video description, you can go and download it for free. It's my favorite brush. I use it for everything when I'm working in Procreate. So now I'm gonna draw in just a loose swirly line or a flourish and then we'll mask it. Okay, so just a basic swirly line. And now we can come in here and we can see how it overlaps the A right here, overlaps everything really wherever, because it's on the top layer. So now we can choose where we want it to overlap and where we don't want it to overlap. So I'm gonna come back to my layer. I've got my swirl or my flourish layer right here. And all you're gonna do is tap on the little thumbnail of it and just choose mask. And when you do that, you can see there's a new layer that's created, but it's actually attached to this layer now, my flourish layer. That's really important. Whatever you do on your layer mask affects the layer that it's tied to or attached to or connected to right here. And because we tapped on this thumbnail, we told Procreate that this is the layer that we want our mask attached to. So whatever we do on our layer mask affects our flourish layer right here. So when you're using masks, there are two colors that you paint with. You paint with black or you paint with white. And the main kind of phrase that will help you remember which one to use is black conceals and white reveals. Whenever you paint in black, you're hiding something. Whenever you paint with white, you're revealing something. So if I paint in black to hide a portion and then I change my mind later on, all I have to do is paint in white in the same area and it'll bring it back. So I'll show you exactly what that looks like. So we want to make sure that our layer mask is selected. You can see this is layer three being selected. This is my layer mask being selected. So we've got our layer mask selected 
and now we need black. And in order to grab true black, you're just gonna double tap down here and it'll give you true black. And then you can choose whatever brush that you'd like. I'm gonna keep with my mono weight brush for this entire tutorial just because it makes things really easy. So now we're going to paint in black on our layer mask. And say I like that this overlaps here, but I want to hide where it overlaps on my S. So I can come in really close and just start painting. And it's just like you're erasing. So I can just draw this. And I'm painting in black. And say I went a little too far, like I removed this portion right here, but I want to bring that back so it's touching. Since I'm painting in black, all I have to do is switch to painting in white. So just double tap where the white is and you'll get true white or you can tap your white down here. And then I'm just gonna paint this in to reveal it again. And I can get nice and close and I don't have to try and draw this to match it perfectly if I had used the eraser. That's the magic of masking. So you can see now it goes behind my ass. And I like that this one comes in front of it, so I've got one that's behind it and one that's in front of it. So I'm going to hide this part and keep it in front of this part of the K. So I'm gonna come back and grab my true black. And once again, you're just going to make sure that you're on your layer mask. You can see the black line right here. That's where I hid this stroke where it overlapped the S. So I can do the same thing to the K right here. I'm painting in black, so I'm just hiding it temporarily or permanently if you don't ever want to bring it back, but you have access to the original now if you ever want it in the future. So I'm gonna come in and now since this one overlaps, I'm gonna put this one behind it and I kind of alternate when I'm doing this kind of effect where I want things to look like they're intertwining, especially with flourishes. So this one's going to overlap and then go behind. Okay, so now you can see how I've got my flourishing completely intertwining with my text and I didn't have to erase anything. And if I change my mind and I wanna reverse how things are working, all I have to do is return to my layer mask and wherever there's black, all I have to do is paint it white to bring it back. Like if I wanna bring back where it overlapped my eye, just make sure you're on your layer mask, come up, grab true white, and then just paint it in. And you can see I can bring it right back whenever I want to. I'm gonna undo this because I do want it behind there. That's probably my most used scenario whenever I'm masking just because I change my mind a lot when I'm integrating flourishing and I want some things to go behind and some things in front. And later on as I'm adding more and more elements, sometimes I change my mind about what I want behind and in front. And this is a really, really simple, quick way to not lose all that work by erasing it. You just hide it and then you bring it back whenever you need to. So that is scenario number one. So scenario number two is masking in the texture like I showed you in the first example of putting that gold texture within your text. So I'm gonna show you what that looks like now. So I'm going to create a new Procreate file that starts us off from scratch again with just the lettering and the background. Okay, so we're back to the original where all I have is my lettering. You can see I've got my lettering on one layer and I've got my background on the other one. And now let's say that I want this masking, the lettering that I have right here. Let's say that I want to put a texture inside of it. So Procreate kind of changed how this works before there was one way of doing it and now they've changed it where it's just masking specific, which is actually much better than the way it used to work. So this is how you do it. Um, I do have a Procreate metallic and watercolor texture kit. So I'm using a texture from my Procreate metallic texture kit. Uh, if you'd like to learn more about that kit, just hit the link in the video description, you can check it out. So all I'm gonna do is input that texture. So I'm gonna come over to my wrench, image, insert a photo, and you can see these are some of the textures that I have. So I'm gonna grab my gold texture right here, and it's just gonna pop it right into my document where I need it. So this is great. This is exactly what I want it to look like. And now what I'm going to do is select my lettering layer right here. So just tap on it and choose select. And now it's just selecting my lettering and nothing else because that's the layer that I'm on. Now, if I come over to my texture and I tap on my texture layer, all I have to do is tap on the little thumbnail image right here and choose mask. And when I do that, it masks this texture into whatever I had selected previously. 
So now I can deselect everything. So just hit this little icon up here. Now everything's deselected, but I still have this layer turned on underneath it. And I don't need that anymore because I'm just working with my gold. And it is a little hard to see, so I can change the color of my background. So I'm just gonna grab my dark blue background and drag it in right here. So now I've got my texture masked right into my lettering, and that's how easy it is to mask in your lettering. And if you wanna incorporate flourishes later on, all you have to do is make sure you create a layer at the very top. I'm gonna grab my medium blue for this one, or you could grab your bright teal. And now I'm just gonna draw another flourish right here, really basic and I can mask on this one. This is my flourish layer. So all I have to do is tap, apply a mask. And once again, we're painting in black or white and I'm gonna grab black because I wanna hide portions of this. So I'm going to hide this part of it. And you can see how I went a little too far right here. So in order to bring it back, all I have to do is double tap where the white is and just bring that back. That's how easy it is. I'm gonna go back to my black to hide other portions of my flourish. If you ever encounter a situation where you have a corner right here, and it would be really helpful if you just had a transparency on your stroke so you could see what's underneath a little bit better so you could mask it easier, all you have to do is come to your layer, make sure you're on your original flourish layer, tap where the N is, and then you can reduce the opacity, and now I can see through it, and then return to your layer mask, and now I can remove the area that I don't want right here, and then you just wanna make sure you come back and increase your opacity to 100%. So that can make it easier sometimes when you're on edges or corners that can be a little trickier. So that's how to mask a flourished element and how to also mask a texture within lettering or typography in Procreate. So now you can just add in whatever extra text that you'd like. I'm using this bright teal for this so then you can just finish things off. All right, and there we go. Once again, the links to everything that was mentioned in this video is available in the video description. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please subscribe, and don't forget to head on over to my blog, every-tuesday.com, for even more iPad lettering tutorials and a bunch of freebies. Thanks so much for watching, and I will see you next time.